Six Sue. Sue Frankie is a lead, one of the lead, or the lead social worker, and she's going to talk about not the season fall, but all about falls and how um, that happens here at Green Springs. So, Sue, give us all the information you can about that. <laughs> well, and talking about one of my favorite subjects in the idea that there are so much that we can do to help prevent falls, especially as we roll into spring. And uh, now that it's spring, we can get outside a little bit more. And there are some things to be aware of in that our bodies get acclimated to different surfaces. So for the winter, we've been acclimated to walking on the carpet and on the flatter surfaces, maybe some of the tile, but for the most part, it's been relatively flat surfaces. But now that it's springtime and everybody can get out and enjoy even the different textures of the sidewalks, it's very important to understand that it takes a little bit of time for our bodies to adjust to the different surface. And so to take it easy, when you first go out for a couple of times, realizing that your body will adjust, it's sort of that, that premise of practice makes perfect. And it, <laughs> it, it, our bodies really do adjust, but it does take that time. So to understand that, I think, is first. And then also, as we go into the spring season, we, we start changing shoes. <laughs> and we go from closed-toed shoes, supportive shoes, thinking about shoes that go out into the weather, to shoes that are a little bit more um, open. They possibly don't have a back on them, which puts our feet and our bodies at a little bit more risk. So in terms of shoes, especially as we start thinking about going outside or the, the warmer weather, I really encourage everybody to, to think about it. And you want to continue to wear those comfortable shoes. Um, for ladies, sandals are okay, but it's really encouraged that you have a back to the sandal and that the heel is not too too high because it, without a back your foot can slip out very easily and one of the uh, shoes that really is highly discouraged is that flip-flop <laughs> because they uh, they provide little or no support and they can get caught easily in different surfaces I had my own experience with that recently oh <laughs> I had been at the pool going swimming had a lovely swim and was coming out and I thought oh it's such a nice day I'll walk outside and I was wearing flip-flops and I walked on a sidewalk that had a little um, not quite level where the side pieces meet mm -hmm. and somehow or other my flip-flop which I've worn on that same walk probably hundreds of times caught in that little ridge and I fell on my head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens so fast. Yes, and it does. <laughs> without any warning. And it so it, and it it's hard to say, but the flip flops really are they, they just don't provide a whole lot of support, so that's why. <laughs> I look at them in a whole different way now, and I think I'll throw them out. Yeah. <laughs> and I would say, too, I know for myself, sometimes when you get a new pair of shoes and start wearing them, there are some shoes that you find you catch your toe a little bit more or all of a sudden you're you're stumbling some and so there are <coughs> shoes where I've really had to say even if after I've worn them for a little bit you know what these shoes are putting me at danger mm -hmm. and I will then mm -hmm. put them away because I it's really important to understand how the shoes can can affect your your walking too 
Especially if you're in, in stiletto heels. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> walk very carefully. Hold on to somebody else or <laughs> in those stilettos. Yeah. Well, yeah. I heard a very interesting um, n numbers about falls in Greenspring yesterday at the meeting, which is usually coffee with Ben. Yesterday it was coffee with Brian. <laughs> um, and up to now, this year, which is only in, in its fourth month, there have been over 200 falls on the campus, and most of them have been in people's apartments. And that Very is... Very low percentage outside. That is correct. Of course, most correct. people are, don't walk outside that much, but even so. It was very interesting to hear those statistics. And you know where the falls happen most? They happen most when people are going from the bedroom to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And it, a lot of times at night or early in the morning, because getting out of bed or walking when you're sort of in a sleepy type of a state can be difficult. Mm -hmm. It takes some time to regulate the blood pressure. So uh, it's highly encouraged that when you get out of bed to take your time, uh, make sure you flex your feet back and forth, get on the edge of the bed, uh, make sure that your feet are moving before you get out of bed. If you have an assistive device, make sure that's right there with you and ready mm -hmm. to go so that you can use that going from one place to another. The mm -hmm. other, another really important thing if you tend to get up in the middle of the night, which a lot of people do, is to have a night light of some sort to light your way mm -hmm. from the bedroom to the bathroom. And if that doesn't uh, seem to work for you, even there are movement activated lights mm -hmm. that you could get. Some people have to walk through their closet to get through the bath mm -hmm. to the bathroom. So making sure that that closet area is cl a very clear path mm -hmm. um, because if you're using things, if you don't have an assistive device and you find that you're using things to hold on to, there's not much in that closet <laughs> to hold on to. Close. <laughs> yeah, which don't give you much support no. either. So th I think those are some, some things to think about. Um, I've had people that have had difficulty with different socks. The tendency is to walk in socks that then are slippery. So you go from a carpeted area to possibly a more slippery area in the bathroom in socks, and that can cause falls. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to wear socks without shoes, <coughs> look for socks that have some type of a, a non-skid on the bottom of them to keep you from falling. Another possibility is slippers that you can put on to make sure that you have a little bit of traction. How about bare feet? Bare feet are good. They have traction. <laughs> they do have traction. And you know, it's interesting, they, the, the studies show that we reduce our risk of falls most by having some type of shoe on. Mm. There's something about bare feet where it doesn't distribute the weight mm. as well mm. as when you're wearing a good sold shoe. Mm -hmm. So something to think about. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, shoes are, are preferable. A nice fitting shoe is preferable to bare feet mm -hmm. in that way. Bathrooms can also have then a rug in them, which can, with a non-skid on the bottom, mm -hmm. which can help dually in that it makes it so the bathroom floor isn't so slippery, but then also if there's water that might leak from the bathtub or the bath or the shower, mm -hmm. that it can soak up that water for you mm -hmm. so it doesn't mm -hmm. make the, the water slippery. <laughs> well, that, <clears throat> I think we all know that in our, you know, somewhere in our brain up here, but so many times it's just convenient to be barefoot, which I do a lot in my apartment, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, find it, com actually sometimes I find it easier walking in barefoot than I do in shoes, but they're probably the wrong shoes then. It's possible. It's possible. I know myself too. I, I walk barefoot, but uh, it's always good to be cautious mm -hmm. in that way. And I think one of the things I want to um, 
let everybody understand is that falls happen. They do happen. Mm -hmm. um, accidentally, we move too quickly sometimes, we turn around too quickly, our bodies don't adjust, they do happen. Mm -hmm. And that when you do have a fall, I really encourage everybody to let their doctor know. I know the doctors ask pretty much at every appointment now, have you had a fall yes. <laughs> since the last time I saw you? Mm -hmm. And that's not to check up on you or to make you feel guilty. <laughs> it's really to find out how you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then also, if it seems like you've had a fall or two, to be able to look at some of the benefits of different um, preventive measures. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful fitness center here mm -hmm. that can help strengthen you. We have uh, fitness coordinators, some trainers that can help you develop a plan in conjunction with some of your uh, diagnoses that you have. If it seems like a little bit more intensive therapy is beneficial. The outpatient physical therapy department we have in Hunter's Crossing, a doctor, um, if they find that you're falling or it's from weakness, may mm -hmm. recommend that and put in a referral for that. The balance class. The balance class that mm -hmm. the fitness, the wellness center runs. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have at least one, maybe two in the course of the year mm -hmm. that excellent class that really um, stretches your <laughs> your your physical um, balance and just being able to help train yourself to catch your balance in that way. I remember, well I've been here so long that I actually participated in the first balance class we had here with, uh, I can't remember her name, but her parents were here at the time and I've seen her I mean, she's moved on to a different community in uh -huh. Erickson, I think. But anyhow, it was very interesting to do that and helpful as well. It, it gives you tips on exercises to practice on your own for mm -hmm. balance. So Yes, and, and I, you bring up a good point in the sense of practicing mm -hmm. and consistency of doing some of the things mm -hmm. when you go to outpatient physical therapy, they give you exercises mm -hmm. to do at home, and it's very important to follow up on those exercises. Of course. <laughs> and I think the doctors even ask, what type of physical activity do you yeah, do? Yeah, they do, yes. Every time for, uh, I've been there for any kind of reason, checkups basically, um, they ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Just, they, it's a good reminder. <laughs> it is, and it's important for them to know. Mm -hmm. But then there's also certain medications that can put you at risk for falls, mm -hmm. too. They can make you a little dizzy. They can make you possibly a little tired or mm -hmm. feeling a little bit weak. Mm -hmm. And if you find that there's a medication that is putting you at risk for falls. You just don't quite feel yourself when you're on a particular medication. Talk to your doctor mm -hmm. because there are different forms of medications that may be more, put you at less risk mm -hmm. for falls. They can adjust them too. Yes. In terms of how much you're taking, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. yeah. And there are sleeping medications too. Not every sleeping medication is the right one for every person. Right. And some of them do uh, make you more at risk. So it's really to help yourself and continue to assess how you're feeling and how you feel that you're, it, balance and um, just Listen as you're to walking. your body. <laughs> I like that phrase. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we have about run out of time and you have given us so much good information about how to prevent falls and how to be aware of our own issues and bodies when uh, or and don't wear flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you so much for coming, Sue. It's been a pleasure as usual. And um, 
go have a nice day. Thank you, Francis. <laughs>